So it seems that there are only two people in business class tonight on the Aer Lingus A330. I'm lost for words, this is incredible. Welcome to Chicago O'Hare Terminal 5, the final stop on this particular trip across the US. Today I'm taking a flight with an airline that I've been wanting to do for ages now actually, but I've never actually got around to doing them and well, it seems like the perfect time today. Today we're taking a flight with Aer Lingus on board an Airbus A330 in their business class. I'm really looking forward to trying that. I've never flown long haul with Aer Lingus before, which is quite surprising seeing as though we live pretty close to there. But today's the day we're gonna see what it's all about. So let's head inside and take a flight to Dublin Island with Aer Lingus. Aer Lingus go from the International Terminal at Chicago, Terminal 5. Hello, how are you? Thank you very much, yeah, thank you, have a good day. After security, it was time to hit the duty-free to grab something to take home for the kids. Hey, how are you? Isn't it nice? thank you. you? Need to take the kids something home. <laughs> I'm to find something for my wife now. <laughs> You'll like that. Right, so airside at Terminal 5 here at Chicago O'Hare. Let's head to the lounge. Um, it's all very simple here and it's very quiet today. Um, they were saying in Duty Free that um, they're having really busy periods and then every now and then it just goes really quiet and this is one of the quiet periods apparently. So um, yeah, let's try and find the lounge. The Air France lounge was pretty small and very dark, but it was the only one accessible to Aer Lingus passengers. Believe it or not, it was the middle of the day and not night time when I got to the lounge. So Air Fungus are using the um, Air France lounge actually at the moment here at Terminal 5, um, which is alright, there's a few bits and bobs to eat and drink. Um, not much of a view though, there's like wooden boards or something blocking the window off, which is a bit annoying. but. Um, that's all right, for an hour's wait or so until we get on the plane and then off to Dublin. It wasn't long before it was time to head to the gate. Right at the gate and I, in my history of flying through Chicago's Terminal 5 on international flights, I just can't help but think that it has the most depressing gate areas in the whole of the states. Like. <laughs> I've flown through here on BA, I've flown through here on Lufthansa, I've flown through here on all sorts of airlines out of T5 actually and you always end up going from, you know, the, the building itself is a beautiful terminal building, very bright and spacious and brand new but the actual gates themselves are just really dark and dingy and um, yeah, it reminds me of the old um, Terminal 1 at Heathrow many years ago, showing my age now but um, very similar, there's no outside light whatsoever in the gates, it's a little bit sort of annoying because it's such a beautiful terminal if you just walk around it and yet when you come to the gates themselves they're just dark and how oh well but we are ready to go and we'll be boarding in about 15 minutes to take the Aer Lingus Airbus A330 from here in Chicago back to Dublin. My ride to Dublin soon pulled on to stand in Aer Lingus's distinctive classic green livery. This one was delivered new to Aer Lingus in 2007, making it 14 years old when I flew on her. It soon became pretty clear that there weren't going to be that many people on tonight's flight. Pretty soon it was time to get on board the Airbus A330 for my flight back to Europe. Thank you, see you. Hello, you're right. I'm good, thank you. Of course you can. Perfect. So you've got to go through this gully and take a left. Five. A cabin is in this lovely staggered layout, featuring alternate rows with different configurations. I'd chosen a throne seat for tonight's flight, and it's fair to say I wasn't disappointed. Right, so on board the Aer Lingus A330 and oh my goodness, this is totally not what I thought it would be like. It's an absolutely incredible cabin. Look at this. And look at my seat. 
I feel like a king in my throne. That's amazing. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, it's really nice. I'm not sure really what I expected um, from Aer Lingus, having never flown their long haul, but um, their business class is proper nice. Um, have a little look around the seat, shall we? Well, you've got your life flat bed here. Uh, the controls are oh, down here, look. Um, then we've got these more controls here. Power socket, USB, headphones, storage like everywhere. I mean, look at this. Just general storage cubby there. With all of my stuff in it. Oh, there's a privacy divider that pops out by doing that. Or is that one? Oh, that's a table, actually. My apologies. That is the table that pops out there. That's pretty cool. Big TV in front. Welcome on board. More, another poppy down bit with some headphones. Are they branded at all? I don't know. No, don't look like it, but well, Aer Lingus branding. They're not like Bose or anything, but well, they might be. I don't know. Um, but this is just incredible. Even down here, look, there's like more storage for all sorts of things. I mean, I'm guessing no in flight magazines and stuff because of COVID. Um, because a lot of airlines have sort of stopped putting them out um but just just i'm lost for words this is incredible this is really really nice um and i'm almost um i'm almost a bit frustrated that it's only going to be a six hour flight this would be nice for something like a 12 hour flight or something I'm, i might ask them if they can go the other way or something to give us a bit extra time in the air <laughs> The Aer Lingus Business Class Cabin really is lovely. The fact that you can choose the configuration of seats you prefer, depending on how many people you're travelling with, is a really nice touch and I've not flown many airlines that have this configuration. So it seems that there are only two people in business class tonight on the Aer Lingus A330 um, and the crew have just come around and said because of that they're going to give us dinner whenever we want it so um, we're going to have it straight after dinner basically. Um, to allow us to get some food and then get some sleep on the way over to Dublin. So yeah, we'll be pushing back soon. They, they're expecting an early departure, I think, as well, because there's barely anybody on the plane. So they're just gonna go when they can. And sure enough, we were soon pushing back around about 15 minutes ahead of schedule. The route tonight then took us northeast out of Chicago, crossing into Canada and out across Quebec for the Atlantic crossing. Flight time tonight was 6 hours and 21 minutes, cruising at 37 and 39,000 feet. So 
also airborne from Chicago O'Hare on board the Air Lingus Air Fungus Airbus A330. I used to call them Air Fungus, you know. It was a bit of a joke among plane spotters that that's what you'd call them, but actually their service is anything but. They're amazing. Um, been airborne about 10 minutes. I've now got a glass of Reno. A Greek and white wine. Very nice, actually. Appetizer of some rosemary and seaweed biscuits, crackers, things, and a bit of onion jam to go on them and all. Very good so far. We got about six hours to run. I think they're going to bring food around soon. And then I will get my head down for a bit as we head across the pond, Europe bound, towards home. Yay! I'm on my way home. Hellingus offer free Wi-Fi on their flights for business class passengers and came around with these cards that had the code on them. Unfortunately, they brought me around five cards and none of them worked. The flight attendant told me that with so few passengers, they'd simply been collecting them back in and handing them out again on the next flight, which seemed a little bit strange to me. Just like I'd requested, not long after takeoff, dinner was served. So dinner's here. And I've gone for the um, chicken, and it looks really nice, actually. Presented Air Lingus. Let me stick the camera there, look. Hey, there we go. It's like chicken and mashed potato and vegetables and a bit of salad on the side. Very nice indeed. Right, let's do this. Mmm, that is divine. That is amazing. I decided to put down the flatbed to see just how much sleep I'd get on this short six hour flight. Right. Time for bed I think. Um, it's pretty comfortable actually. Very nice flatbed. Um, more than enough room for me at six foot tall or six foot four rather um tall is pretty good i'm um, looking forward to hopefully getting a bit of decent night's sleep tonight um Air Lingus so far their service is just fantastic um really enjoying it the crew are just incredible the cabin is amazing um and yeah, i don't really know what else i can say it's just fantastic easily my probably one of my favorite european airlines that i've had so far actually on the um, transatlantic route everything about them is just really good although i don't necessarily know if that's a totally fair comparison based on the fact that we're like empty tonight the aircraft is empty there's barely any passengers here in either in business class or economy looking back there um it's pretty empty so they haven't really um, got a lot of passengers to split themselves between effectively so they are giving a very good service so I don't know if this is the normal service that you get from Aer Lingus um, but I'd like to think that it is and the crew are just amazing absolutely amazing it's so nice um, the only crew I would say that have ever beaten this crew in terms of their friendliness and willing to help is BA um, who were pretty good as well so um, yeah definitely a really really good experience so far i'm going to try and get some sleep we land in like five and a half hours so i'm going to try and at least get a few hours before we arrive into dublin so i will speak to you in the morning good night well good morning um we have around an hour and a half to land until we're down in Dublin we're just we're sort of between Greenland and Ireland at the moment um, slept 
a couple of hours. It's not, nothing to do with the seat. The seat's really comfy. I'm just really tired and jet lagged. Yeah, it's sort of catching up with me now, and I'm, my body just doesn't know what time zone I'm on. I'm on. Um, but yeah, it wasn't due to the seat at all. It was just due to my weird body clock being all messed up with all the time zones and stuff. I'm looking forward to getting back on UK time actually for <laughs> a few months. It should be good. Um, so yeah, about an hour away from Dublin now. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far, actually. I think they're doing some breakfast um, at the minute. I've heard clinking and clanking and trolleys being moved about, so potentially we might be getting some breakfast in a few moments. Um, and then commencing our descent down into Dublin, Ireland. Right, so it seems like a good time to walk you through the in-flight entertainment options here on Air Lingus. TV, what we got on TV. Oh, these look exciting. Advanced cleaning measures. It sounds like a really thrilling Netflix docu-series or whatever it is. Um, cabin air quality. Seems pretty cool as well. Um, oh, here's some more exciting things. Let's have a look. A few different TV series. I mean, there's not a massive selection. A few box sets here. Perry Mason, good lord. My gran used to watch Perry Mason, like in the 90s. Is it still a thing? Wow. Big Bang Theory, of course, every airline's favourite TV box set that they always seem to have. Um, on the middle, oh, Young Sheldon, of course, as well, another one. <laughs> every airline has those on, I don't know, they must like, give the rights to anybody on those things to be able to play them. Audio. Let's have a look. Oh, we got country. What we got? Let's have a look. Never heard of it. 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 Never heard of any of those. Oh, I've heard of Emily Lou Harris and Johnny Cash, of course. Ah. Oh yes. Brad Paisley Radio. Now that is good. We've got about an hour actually till we land. I might actually listen to that. <laughs> and the flight map, which is pretty decent. That's pretty cool. It's very clear actually. It's a very nice flight map. So yeah, not a bad system all in all. Um, not a massive selection of stuff to watch, but um, hey, it's good. Um, just be nice if they added a few more things on there really. <sighs> Sounds like breakfast is on the way. Look at this, look. I'd love to meet the person who wraps these headphones and does the sort of wrapping the cable in and packing these headphones. But why? Why do they do them so tight? Gosh, there we go. With the music cranked up, we cruise in over Ireland to make a beautiful approach and landing onto runway 28 at Dublin. My flight to Dublin cost me £1,721 or just over US$2,300. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Fantastic service. Thank you. 
As always, a special thanks to my wonderful patrons. You can join them at the link on the screen for access to my WhatsApp group, weekly live Zoom calls and exclusive merch. Right then, back in a very deserted Dublin airport. It's eerie. Look at this. There's nobody around. Um, what an amazing flight that was though with Aer Lingus on the A330. Absolutely loved that. Great crew, fantastic aircraft and service. Um, and yeah, just sad that um, it's so quiet at the moment on board. It really sort of hits home when you get a flight like that at the moment. Um, you can have flights that are really busy and then every now and then you get a flight like that where it's really empty and even the crew were saying that they missed the passengers. You know, they liked it at first with it being quite empty, but now they just want everybody back again. And I can completely understand that. Um, let me know what you thought to Aer Lingus down in the comments below. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. I thought it was great, but um, I'd like to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.